Alrighty. Yes, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode four with a good friend of mine, Mr. Mitch. One of the best guys in the world, genuine, humble, knows his word, and he'll sneak up on you, man. I, that's what I like about him. You don't see it coming, and then boom, he starts speaking about the word, and things happen, and things break out in a, in a genuine way, and we need more genuine in the world. But um, guys, this is Mitch, and introduce yourself, my friend. Yeah, I'm Mitch. Married six kids total, man, four younger kids, two, two older kids from a, a first marriage. Uh, sold out to Jesus a little over six years ago. Uh, just, just been hauling and I just enjoy life, man. I wake up every day for him. <clears throat> I no longer live situational and it's the most like amazing thing. And I'm, and it's just, just a lot of freedom that I used to be bound by. So it's just absolutely, it's just good, man. God is, Jesus is just good. And thanks for having me on Trey, man. It's a, uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, man. We haven't known each other that long, but it was definitely one of those instant like connections. I'm like, man, this this guy's the real deal. <laughs> he's, he's he's the real deal. Like he's not playing games. You know, a lot of people play games, and it's um, I just see that hunger within you, and I see that separation from the world. That is um, it's a rarity. Unfortunately, I think it's becoming more common, but I still see it as a rarity. No. Oh, Appreciate you, man. The feeling is mutual. Feeling is definitely mutual. And those those nights at school when we would just randomly <laughs> go into or see something like, oh man, what's going on here? Or something break out. And we'll definitely talk about that night with Ben Fitzgerald. That was nuts. But <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I got I got whack that night, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that again the other day, man. I was like, I watched that and I was like, Ooh. yeah. Oh man. But yeah, first thing is first. Uh, first question is, how did you encounter the Lord? So I'm going to go back. So I didn't grow up in a church, which is um, amazing. <laughs> you know, so, um, But at 21 years old, it was my second time ever going into a church. And there was this prophetic guy there. Uh, now my ex-wife. So she wanted me to go. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll Oh, it's a bunch of garbage, but it was my attitude going in there. So the guy starts the service and he's like, he's like, there's this, I'm going to tell this story about my neighbor and his name was Alan Mitchell. Like my name's Mitchell Allen Foster. And he starts telling the story about how his neighbor and how he had to speak the word of God to him like this, this certain day. And he, I guess he dies in a car accident like later on that day. And then he goes into like describing the guy and I'm, I'm like, the whole time I'm like, why is this guy talking about me? You know, I'm freaking out in my head, man. You gotta understand, I'm going in here like, I know something about this guy named Jesus, and I know something about Noah in this ark. And honestly, that's it I have for Bible knowledge. I don't have any more Bible knowledge. And so next thing I know, he's like, there's somebody here that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I need that person to stand up now. And I don't remember if the guy pointed at me or what but the next thing i know i'm i'm standing up you know and i'm like in my mind i'm like i'm not standing up and i'm standing up you know I'm like and you know lots of tears asking jesus in my life they're praying in some crazy language over here and um like something happened that day but i was you know 21 years old i saw like hypocrisy so bad inside the church even with my father-in-law at the time it was his church but like he'd also be drinking and partying with us on the weekends so <clears throat> kind of fast forward like nine years i think maybe i hit some easters in here some christmases <laughs> you know over those next nine years you know pay homage to god or whatever but uh crazy crazy part about this though i actually crashed a car at 130 miles an hour probably about four months after that moment oh Wow. And like something supernatural took place. I mean, we we spun around and went through like a dirt parking lot. Our back end of the car hit a road sign. I went back out on the road. It's crazy. And I and I think about that because that dude died in a car car accident. And just the grace of the mercy of the Lord, man, because it would have been a bad finish for me at that. Um. So really, fast forward nine years, going through divorce. Um. 
terrible, you know, wife cheating on me with a neighbor, all, all this stuff. You know, it was like my life was like an episode of Jerry Springer. And um, <laughs> legit, man, I could have been on the show. Now it's like life is horrible. So I picked up the word, man. And, you know, at this point, I just sold my like my spray foam equipment. So I just got done with my business in three months. I mean, I read the entire Bible. So at this point, I got like water baptized, started going to church, still didn't know who my, who my God was. You know what I mean? Now I knew lots about my God. Um, so shortly after that, you know, go through divorce, fall back into the world doing, now I'm the drunk guy. Now I'm the hypocrite. Now I'm the drunk guy talking about Jesus. Hilarious, right? <laughs> it all comes around. Um, then my wife that I have now, like somebody I'd met years ago, prior but then we started chatting all this stuff she got pregnant and then um moved up to upstate new york together and at this point i i started listening to the word man just listening to the word i was doing uh, installation estimates during the day so i was driving like four or five hours a day that's all i was doing every day for probably like six or seven months was just listening to mm-hmm. the word i sought a lot of truth too because like what happened at 30 in the bible like this thing inside me for truth and and then it was like all the word in there but then i still had the sin in my life ton of word in me a lot of sin super prideful super super prideful man when you when you're full of the word and you don't know the father like you just become arrogant right it's like knowledge puffs you up but like love edifies right so but then i came to the point i'm like oh he's really real so I know this word really well, so I'm either for him or against him. And I had to take a look at my life, you know, and, and so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm against him. You know, if I, if I look at the life that I'm living and so it was my new year's resolution. And so January 1st, 2016, I just, uh, I went all in for the Lord, man. And when I say I went all in, I went all in, like turn off the TV, just, just separated from like everything, man. I, I laid down, like I was playing in a 30 and over baseball league. The Lord had me lay that down, laid down golf. These are not bad things, but it was like right. the idols in my life at the time. And so I just laid it all down and I just started seeking the Lord with everything that was inside me. And like in a moment, my life changed all of a sudden, all that sin was just like gone. And I wasn't trying and I wasn't even thinking sin. And it was just this amazing journey wife thought i was going crazy it's amazing now though but it was five months later it was like in my closet me and jesus and baptizing the holy ghost speaking in tongues and um shortly after that man the power and love conference just started seeing miracles man just praying for people and just seeing people healed and just it's been a fun ride like now i just i enjoy life so much now man like i, I wake up every day and i'm just like man just knowing that some crazy things could happen today. And uh, mm. it's just, it's amazing, man. It's just, he's so good. You know, it's, he, he, he saved me from, from myself. So that's kind of like the, a lot of stuff happened within there, but that's kind of like the, the most paraphrased version I can give you. Cause it's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, absolutely. I was stubborn, man. Yeah. <laughs> we all got a little stubborn in there some way. Every last <laughs> yeah. bit. Every last yeah. one of us, man. Uh, and when you got saved, how did you come into Jesus affect the people you were surrounded by? So I think the biggest person initially was my wife. Actually, we weren't married at this time. We, we ended up getting married a little while later. But for her, it was like, what on earth has taken place? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, she was just like, you're crazy. I remember when one point specifically it was probably like a couple months in and i just remember being in the kitchen and she was just like jesus 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 i can't do jesus all the time and like my response is like why not it'll be awesome <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but man, oh, I, man i learned to pray for her right like i was seeing something so beautiful and i was seeing this loving father and you know just just having the word apart from like full surrender you, you don't get this loving father you get a lot of condemnation so I just actually started like praying for my wife. I would just go in the other room, you know, and a lot of times it was like, you know, coming against me because she's just not understanding like what's going on with you. So 
you know, just going out and just be like, man, I thank you for a godly wife. And I thank you. And I just started thanking the Lord for like who she really was. And she just wasn't seeing who she really was. So mm. probably, I mean, five, six months later, you know, she started reading the word probably three months in, two months in, started reading the word. But it was probably around five months in, she actually heard the audible voice of God. And that changed her. That was like her her moment of like, he's real. And, you know, the word she heard was deny them access. And she realized like all the lust in her mind and all the the choices that she were, was making was her. Mm-hmm. And that she had to like turn away, you know, deny yourself, <laughs> pick up your cross and follow him, the scripture. That's right. what the Lord was just, just showing her. Um, you know, and then shortly, like it was, you know, my family definitely lost a lot of friends in there too. Um, Cause they were just kind of like, it's crazy now, you know? So, I mean, there's, a, you know, you lose some good friends, you know, people don't want to be around you anymore. Um, cool though. My best friend who I was in that car accident with at 21 years old <laughs> on cocaine and all messed up. He's also serving the Lord now too. Wholehearted. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yes, but, it is. Um, you know, and since then I've like baptized my own mom. Oh, it's been cool. My dad now is really starting to, their, their divorce, he's, my dad's remarried someone else, but he's also starting to seek the Lord. Um, it's just been cool, man. It's, it's kind of cool, but it separates. Same times it brings, it brings unity, but, but the gospel separates, man. It separates. You know, I have a brother. I think I that's my favorite. Favorite. I think that's yeah. my favorite thing. Yes, I, I, I love all the things what the gospel brings, but I think that's so okay, let's talk about something else. Or they they, yeah. they won't say that hey, you know, he's gonna change your life, but it's gonna be a separator. It's gonna make friends either prove or become more of a friend. And, and you see how intimate they are, family members, whoever it may be, or the other side. Well, I say it's going to be both. <laughs> or they're going to go running, like, when the light cuts on and there's roaches on the floor, they just scatter. You know, so it's like, nope, we're not, we're not in, in this. So that's what I think one of my favorite teacher of all time of the Bible um, taught was, was teaching that when the Holy Ghost comes, the first thing he does is electrify the fence. <laughs> so yeah. so you gotta you're jumping off you're jumping off to the left <laughs> or you're jumping <laughs> off to the right so i find that to be extremely true and i think that that's very very oily very juicy right there man yeah you know it's like have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness mm. yeah. they don't know why you don't run to the same excess of the riotousness right and they're just like you don't party with us anymore and they think that you're judging them instantly they think you're judging them even though you're like oh man i'm not ju- I, I was there you know right and and you just try to show them like a light because it's like god wants to save them from the same destructive life they're in and i believe they're coming yeah. man you know just you pray for them man i believe god will get them too absolutely absolutely and sometimes we just have to be the epistle yeah. Read by me. Because at the end of the day, you know, until they see something that God does in you that they know that wasn't you, then that kind of turns or starts to get them like something's gotten them. I've had it in my own life. I've seen it in other people's lives. Like I would know someone and I'm, and then there would be a moment where God would God would grasp them. And I'm like, that is not who I just saw. 20 minutes ago, that was divine. Whatever got him or her, whatever I just seen was not of human hands. <laughs> so yeah. those things are, sometimes you just need literally the fear of the Lord. It, it'll just, it's, if he'll do something in somebody, that can be a way of imparting the fear of the Lord. You're like, no, wait a minute, that's that's beyond me. And, that, and being used in the right circumstances can literally turn somebody's life over to Christ and be drawn. You know, if you be, you know, if we lift Jesus up, you know, if I be lifted up, draw all men unto me. And some people got different meanings for that. But my thing is the, the word is deep. And whatever he reveals to you at that moment, 
if he gets his truth across, it is what it is. You know, I'm not the Hebrew text guy. Hey, I thank God for it. But at the end of the day, the Lord's looking at the doers and the non-doers. And this is what he wants. He wants somebody that's that's action. <laughs> Whether it's in <laughs> prayer, fasting, however it looks like. Amen.